Surfers and surfers and sharks colliding off the Florida coast. This video from late last month, a shark more than 50 shark attacks reported this year, resulting in five deaths. We have a shark expert coming up at 740 Eastern on AMHQ. He'll explain how simple weather events like heavy rain or temperature can draw sharks closer to shore. A boater in South Florida is hospitalized today after a possible run-in with a shark. His wounds appear to be much more serious than those victims at New Smyrna Beach. New this morning, doctors say the man, who's said to be 40 years old, is expected to survive. NBC's Morgan Chesky reports. The day. It's pretty humid, you yeah, know, that's pretty it. humid. Coming up, if you haven't had a summer vacation, it actually does always sort of point to where things are going to fire up yeah. when it comes to storms, where there's the overlap of the most ingredients. And St. Paul, that happens to be you today. So we need to pay <laughs> up in the afternoon. This morning, yeah. mostly dry. There's been a few showers, though, out there. Like, don't let this surprise you. If you're leaving this morning, there's some rain around Lawrenceville. A lot of kids back in school in the south anyway. And so, yes, they're, you know, kids this morning need the umbrella for the bus stop or just a jacket with a hood up or they just make a dash for it. They're always late anyway right um, so that's happening this morning but no lightning there lightning with these thunderstorms right now right along the Gulf Coast that's keeping you off your morning jog or you know beach walk here around Panama City Beach for now and with this general pattern we're in still trophy over the west meeting a dip in the jet stream it, it's gonna keep us unsettled again today we still have plenty of moisture out there we're not getting any clean sweeping fronts through the southeast that's for sure so nothing to clean out or dry out the air so we get into some scattered showers and storms and there's honestly not a a ton of steering right now nothing's nothing's changing today and tomorrow so any storms that do fire up could be slow moving and that could bring us some heavy rain kind of like what we saw in Athens over the weekend so let's go ahead and take a look at things for you today right now big cluster storms off the coast of North Carolina it's not moving towards the coast it's moving away so don't worry about this this down here along the Gulf Coast is sort of paralleling right along it's gonna bring some lightning risks here for the next couple of hours so unfortunately Pensacola Orange Beach you guys are watching that this morning afternoon stuff more in and then by afternoon, it's just popping everywhere, right? You know how it goes in the afternoon. Scattered showers and storms. Uh, isolated in Alabama, a little more scattered here across Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. And then you see the general movement here is going to be moving from west to east, heading over towards the coast, the Outer Banks, as we get into the afternoon and early evening. Um, and then by, you know, I would say 9, 10 o'clock, things start to settle down. Today's forecast does bring thunderstorm chances back into Atlanta. Possible airport delays too this afternoon. Raleigh, Charlotte, uh, Jacksonville, we could use a little rainfall. We're still running a deficit. Tallahassee, we could use a lot of rainfall. We're running a big deficit. Um, and we'll get some of that today and tomorrow. At least chances coming our way. Tuesday's forecast here, I think even more isolated into a lot of the south and east. All right, Steph, let's talk more about what's happening in the quickest. You're sort of at the whim of the wind, right? You just find the right levels of the wind. Speaking of being at the whim of the wind, I mean, when it comes to air travel, the wind does make a big difference at flight level, right? If you're traveling with the jet stream, you get a little extra help if you're traveling against it. Your trip is a lot longer. The jet stream today is actually moving right across the upper Midwest and Northern Plains. And so that is going to help trigger severe storms. That's going to be an area that planes want to avoid today. It also could create some weather delays. Minneapolis is one of those spots, especially afternoon and early evening. Get ready for delays there. Also the south. We'll have some pop-up showers and storms. Atlanta, Orlando, you guys are on the list for possible delays today. This is the area to focus on, though. Mentioned that those jet stream winds diving in here, going to cause the risk of storms turning severe. Traveling on 94 or 90 after lunchtime is probably the timing for when you really have to start to watch out for some of these storms. Driving rain, the kind of rain that's difficult for the, uh, the wipers to keep up with, and of course, strong winds as well. So you see how this all blows through, moving through this afternoon, but then overnight, we start to see the storm still sinking south. Chicago, got to keep an eye on you as well as we get into late night hours, overnight hours here. Jim. All right, guys, we've ordered up. I know they also don't like to be combined um, all the time. So let's go ahead and take a look at your forecast here today. The front that Steph was talking about does actually, uh, it's a second front. We don't see that yet, but the second front this week for the upper Midwest makes a big difference for some of you. And we'll look at that in your weekend in view. Um, today, tomorrow, first front, number one front comes in. Chicago, a few thunderstorms early tomorrow, gets into the northeast. Not a big deal, but there will be some scattered showers and storms. The bigger deal is the Wednesday front. This is the one that brings the big change behind it. So this comes in and we start to see some thunderstorms popping the northeast. There is the risk of some severe weather Wednesday into Thursday. But once the front comes through Chicago, this 82 degrees, 
Fargo the 77. Um, it comes with low humidity. It's like you get a, you know, your main dish, your entree is your, uh, your temperatures that are going to be nice summer like, but the side dish, which ends up being the star of the show is the lower dew points. And we get that all weekend long in the Northeast and then in the Midwest, although not to the South stuff, because this cold front, as you know, in August is not going to make it that well, Again, all that far. Again, a car yeah, movie, if you ask me. I mean, that fog is like ice. moving in, and you're, you don't know what's in it. Yes, kind of spooky for sure. Um, I do want to talk about fog actually in the Southeast, maybe not that dense, but we'll talk about that in, in just a moment. Today, travel on 95, scattered showers and storms, not this morning, but the afternoon and evening is when you will find that here on 95. So watching for some heavy rain um, it's possible that you know, that in itself will slow you down, but some of those storms could get a bit stronger with some gusty winds, probably not severe. But really, the first issue this morning, the first um, order that you got to deal with is the fog. We've got dense fog advisories across middle Tennessee, western uh, Tennessee, also down into northern Alabama, central Alabama, parts of... South Carolina and North Carolina also have some dense fog advisories. We're down to two miles in Fayetteville. Um, nothing here is that criteria. We're at five miles in Nashville, but you know that there's pockets outside of at the airport that are even, you know, a bit thicker than that. In Nashville, this is a tough day because it's back to school for kids here, Nashville Public Schools. So watch out for those kids at the bus stop this morning. Steph and Jim. All right. Well, for that, for there the have been some amazing deals, but you have to be able to go like next week. So and you can plan really a big well, trip like that. And really random times too. Right, right, right. You gotta be flexible. With like three but, stops. If you're flexible, you can I save know. a ton of money. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes I like the planning of the trip too, right? Yeah, and you, you don't stressful. get that if you plan last minute. I enjoy the planning of the trip. You get to, you know, uh, think about what's to come. New York City, if you're traveling here today, think about a nice day. We've got temperatures starting off in the 70s. Nice bright out there this morning. Not a lot in the way of clouds expected today. Perfect weather for Chinatown, the Little Italy Food Fest. That goes from 1030 to 130 today. We're going up to the mid 80s. Slight chance of storms comes in tonight. I got to show you how things evolve here in the Northeast because it's actually amazing right now, especially in New England with this lower dew point air. 48 degree dew point in Boston and 55 in New York City is air that you barely notice if you ask me. We're down here in like this comfortable even dry range when it comes to our dew point scale. So is this going to last because you walk outside right now and you've got a taste of fall. You're thinking about back to school shopping right with weather like this. It will not last. Today we're going to start to see the winds come in from the east first and then the south and we'll get some um, increase in terms of humidity. But in terms of the actual weather, we're great. We're looking at nice dry weather. Temperatures hit the upper 70s in Providence, low 80s in Scranton and also um, in Albany, New York. So let's time things out for you today. 85 degrees in Atlantic City, the wind from the north northwest for you. Um, just really nice low humidity to start, but that does get on the increase through the day, which is not such a bad thing if you're on the beach. You want like a little tinge of humidity in the air, right? So after you go swimming, you come out, you're not like shivering from evaporational cooling. Chatham, we go to 78 degrees city, that northeast wind at seven miles per hour. Jim, what's happening coast we'll to coast? have a little bit of a bite. Look on the Weather Channel. We are taking survival preparation to the extreme, showing you how to be ready for any disaster. Survival expert and host of the Weather Channel show, SOS How to Survive, Creek Stewart, took some of our meteorologists out in the wild to teach them some life or death skills. Yes, so check out how I learned an ingenious way to build a bed in the wild. Ready for any disaster, from safe bugs and berries to eat, and how to start a fire to stay warm. Our survival expert helps you survive any outdoor calamity. It's all right now on Amy. Like that camera is doing into Minneapolis and show you that it's look, looking like a, you know, it's pretty much going to consume the whole day. The hit and miss thunderstorms, that is, right? So as we head into Green Bay, we're also going to get it basically through the entire day with our temperatures you know, we're going to be topping out right around 80 degrees, so not too terrible with the temperatures. Even into Iowa, and this is where we actually could see some of those storms, too, uh, as we head into the overnight hours lasting until tomorrow. So here's a big picture of what we're going to be dealing with. Minneapolis, Minnesota, a big chunk of it. This is 9 in the morning. It's going to be off to our west here in the western portion of the state, perhaps around that late lunchtime hour. It will make its way to surround Minneapolis, and then, unfortunately... Look at that, 3 o'clock. Some people start to go home from work at 3 o'clock. I feel like everything's kind of shifted. Some people go into the office 6, 7, and then leave around that 3, 4 o'clock hour, right? Uh, school, I do not believe, is in session yet here uh, throughout the northern tier. But it is going to be clearing through as we head into 6 p.m. But as we follow this line south, it's going to be into Wisconsin for a lot of you that are going to be traveling home uh, from work here. Green Bay, thankfully, it won't get through us until we head, you know, into that after dinner time, though, depending on when you eat dinner. I like to eat dinner 
I'm a girl, well, on this schedule, I eat dinner sometimes at like two o'clock in the afternoon. But if I was normal, a schedule, I like to like, I'm a six o'clock dinner girl, right? So you have time to digest and everything. But I know eight o'clock, it can be dinner time for a lot of people this day and age. By the time you get home and get everything settled, and you know, especially if the kids have sporting events and whatnot. And as we head towards Des Moines down I-35, a little bit later, but watch for some of these to bow out too. Des Moines, this might be waking you up as uh, hopefully you are in bed and sleeping by the time this goes through. Jim, you don't. now it's time to talk about August cold fronts. And I feel like you have to air quote cold fronts when you're talking about them coming through in August because they, they don't do a whole lot of bringing in the cold air. Uh, and we have a couple moving through. By the way, Chicago, I mean, our average is 83. So we're starting off today at 89. And then we get 84, 86, and then finally Thursday, Friday, 82, 80. So this first front comes through, doesn't really do a whole lot for Chicago. It's really that second one that's going to help cool us off a lot more. But, you know, they're not excessively cold. Even in places like Boston, we're basically going to be back down towards average. So these cold fronts are really more known for the storms that they're going to produce and not the cold air that they're going to usher in. So Chicago, Detroit, Syracuse for tomorrow, it's all very scattered in nature. As we head into Wednesday, it's deeper into the Northeast. That's where we will see it from Maine all the way down uh, into West Virginia, also into Virginia. You know, I called them the Virginias once. It got everyone very upset when I combined West Virginia and Virginia. Like, you can do it with the Carolinas and the Dakotas, but apparently not with the Virginias. Sorry. I know it's very offensive. Very offensive. Oh, they don't like it in, North no. in the Carolinas either? No. You just can't please everyone. No. <laughs> uh, New England down towards the Mason-Dixon. The possibility of storms on Wednesday. And, you know, maybe some flooding, depending if you get into one of those heavier downpours for you here along the I-95 corridor. Quick look at Boston. As I mentioned, 84, 86, our average, Jen, this is still above average, so not really a cold front. Yeah, you know, I try to separate out.